friends, let's um, finish this educational series uh, by talking about these uh, few topics which were not uh, either included in Dr. Osser's presentation or they were not in much detail. So I'm just trying to complete the series right now. So let's start with the ciprohaptidine for PTSD nightmares. So first, let's talk about what is the likely mechanism of action? How will ciprohaptidine work on the sleep aspect, nightmares aspect for PTSD? And the first mechanism is, you know, basically it suppresses REM, rapid eye movement aspect of sleep. And number one mechanism is by blocking or antagonizing 5-HT1A receptor. So 5-HT1A is an autoreceptor. So autoreceptors are like break. If you activate them, then they will do more break and reduce serotonin. But if you antagonize them, then opposite will happen. There will be more flow of serotonin to the midbrain raphae area of the brain, and that causes REM suppression. So that's first mechanism likely mechanism of action. And second is, you know, histamine antagonism. And third is it's a strong anticholinergic uh, property which suppresses REM. Now, in the end, I will talk about side effect of this medicine. And I think the anticholinergic and maybe histamine antagonist effect will play some role in choosing this medication cautiously. Now, Let's say you decide to choose the medication. How will you dose it? So it only comes in four milligram dosage. So it's easy that way. You start with the four milligram. And the dose that was found effective in PTSD nightmare was ranging from four to 24. One study found 16 to 24 milligram. Other found four to 12 milligram. I'll talk about them uh, very quickly. But don't dose beyond 0.5 milligram per kilogram per day for adults. So keep that in mind. I think it has more to do with the side effect getting worse with that. It, it's a strong anticholinergic medication. So be mindful of that. Now, let's talk about studies. Are there any studies showing efficacy of PTSD nightmares? I was able to find three. I will just summarize them very briefly. So study number one was published in 1991. This was a case report, actually. They found a, a dose, median dose of 16 to 24 milligram at bedtime in a combat uh, veterans uh, for nightmares and for dream anxiety disorder. So this was a case report. And the second study was uh, published in 1998. This was a retrospective review of the records for nine patients, and they found dose between four to 12. But as you can see, the response varied from complete remission to decrease in intensity and frequency of nightmares. So it may be because the dose was low, I don't know, four to 12 because on top it's 16 to 24. And the last study, the third one is a case report again, published in 2000. The ciprohepidine was prescribed at 12 milligram at bedtime, 10, 10 p.m. And nightmares became less frightful and they reduced to less than once a week, which is a marked a change in um, helping person, um, you know, do day-to-day -day functioning more effectively. So in the end, I will just bring that um, um, side effect profile now. So what are the side effect profile? So think of the mechanism of action for this now. So mainly it can cause drowsiness. Uh, it's an histamine antagonist. Irritability can happen, which I'm assuming may be due to that serotonin flow increase, but uh, because serotonergic antidepressants can do that too. Hallucinations are a um, known side effect with that, so keep an eye on that, because uh, 
and PTSD, you know, hyper arousal symptoms are there. So you need to separate that from ciprohaptidine side effect versus underlying PTSD causing hyper arousal or dissociative uh, symptoms. And then nausea due to the serotonin effect, headaches due to that. Worsening of nightmares can happen too. So it can have an opposite effect. So keep an eye on that. Now, contraindication and cautions are important because it's a strong anticholinergic medication. So the main contraindications are all related to that. You know, it all makes sense, ranging from angle closure, glaucoma, stenosing peptic ulcer, symptomatic prostatic hypertrophy, bladder neck obstruction, pyloroduodenal obstruction, in elderly patients and in breastfeeding females. And there are cautions as well for somebody with history of bronchial asthma, increased uh, intraocular pressure, hyperthyroidism, cardiovascular disease, and hypertension. So I just felt this is important for us to know because, you know, before we jump into this, have these things ruled out. If you feel any of them is uh, severe enough, don't choose ciprohaptidine then. Now, this was our lecture. I will just bring that important slide back up that the, these are the dose range that you should aim for. So friends, I hope this was helpful. Now, uh, we will end the series by my my next lecture. So I will see you on in that. Thank you again and bye for now.